right. Ready to go. We're live, ready to go. Yeah, it's not a touchscreen computer. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. My my phone buzzed, so I can tell we're on. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. So why don't we pray and we'll get started tonight? Jesus, thank you again for your love and mercy. And we just invite your presence into this Bible study tonight, that you would lead us and guide us by your word, and that your spirit would lead us into all truth, that you'd encourage us and strengthen us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good to have everyone tonight. We're missing Brother John and a couple others that are not here, but uh, Dallas. But we're going to continue, and for those that are able to join online... We're glad that you're with us. So last week, uh, I talked a little bit about doing like chapter studies, how there's some chapters in the Bible that focus on one topic, and I think we did love last week, right? And we talked about 1 Corinthians 13 and really, charity. yeah, charity, right? And of course, the Bible talks about two different types of love. There is filio love, which is brotherly love, and that's where the city of Philadelphia, that's what Philadelphia in the Greek is it means brotherly love and then there's agape love which is it means like a love feast is really the translation and it's from god god's type of love so tonight we're going to talk about faith um we mentioned that scripture there abides these three uh faith hope and love and the greatest of these is love that scripture said last week Mm -hmm. so now we're going to talk about faith and uh I think it's just interesting, we mentioned this as well a couple weeks ago when we were going through the miracles and signs and wonders, that it's, it seems almost odd, but that love is not a condition for one of the gifts of the Spirit. So he said, though I have the you know, gifts of tongues, I speak in tongues of men and angels, but have not love, if love isn't our motivator, then I'm nothing. So I think that that could, I think we could understand that one of two ways, that um, that we have not been made perfect in love, but yet, you know, the Bible says that when we receive the Holy Ghost, we are to grow in God. That's when we're born again, that's the beginning, right? right. But as we mature, that's fruit of the Spirit. And the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, first off, and joy, peace, and so on and so forth. And we talked about that last week. So that just tells me that there's room to grow in love. But the gifts of the Spirit are gifts. And they're to anyone. They're not a sign of uh, spiritual maturity. They're just a gift from God. And anybody can be using a gift. So tonight we're going to talk about faith. And this is not the gift of faith as is found with the gifts of the Spirit. But this is just faith that God gives. And we know that um, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11 tells us that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So the first thing it does is it defines faith. Substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So it means that Though we can't see it, we're still going to act upon it. And when we act upon it, then the evidence will come afterwards. So faith is the fact that we are stepping out believing that God is going to do what God said he's going to do. We faith The the evidence doesn't come first, it comes afterwards. Kind of like... I don't understand that. So... It's kind of like the evidence of a the evidence so of, the of a evidence. yeah the response. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the tangible part of the things that it's the evidence of things that we cannot see. That's what faith is. But yet, so when we think of tangible or evidence, we think of something physical that we can see or touch right but it's the evidence it's the evidence 
know in your heart that's also evident because you know that that's but there's going to be so if you trust and know in your heart then there's going to be action that you're doing right well, yeah. it's more than just a mental acknowledgement it's the fact that okay i believe god answers prayer so i'm going to pray so my my prayer uh peter said lord if it's you bid me to come out of the water out of the boat onto the water and he said it's it's me so peter believed that it was the lord so the evidence of his belief that it was god was that he walked out of the boat onto the water towards jesus he could have stayed in the boat and said Jesus, if it's you, you know, some other form, you know, where it doesn't challenge his faith or gets him to get out of the boat. Um, so basically, this is the way that, uh, another way that you could put it. So faith amounts to the substance, not the things possessed, but of things hoped for. And it's evidence, not of things seen, but of invisible things. So... We, we trust God, so we allow Jesus to lead us in our lives. We believe that living for God is going to lead to blessings of God. The blessings don't come first. And then we serve God. Right. So think of Job for a minute. The devil said to God, doesn't Job serve you, serve you for not? So basically he was saying, you're blessing Job. So Job is serving you. But God proved to Satan, no, Job is serving me, so I'm blessing him. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's the, his faith was the evidence of things that he couldn't see. Evidence of God's blessing. So when he did that, then it's kind of like the scripture says, these signs shall follow them that believe. We don't seek the sign. We seek the Lord. And then the sign follows, right? So faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It does seem kind of hard to understand. Well, it's very hard to understand. <laughs> kind of like if you, you know, you go into a room and turn the light switch on, you know the light's going to come on. Right. And when they... You can't see the electricity. No. And but if they don't, then you're, you wonder what's going on, something's wrong, right? Yeah, and you don't think about it. You don't think, boy, I sure hope this light goes on. No, every time you go in there, no, you just go in there and just yep, flip it on. Right. So it describes, it defines faith, and then it says the the results of faith in verse two. For by it, the elders obtained a good report, and that word "good report," it's the same word. Uh, that's used in Acts chapter 7 where Stephen and the others were cho chosen to wait on tables and the disciples said, choose out seven men of honest report who we may appoint over this business. So, excuse me, that's the same word in the Greek as good report and it's martyrio or basically where we get our word martyr from. So by faith, the elders obtained basically martyrdom. They were willing to die for the gospel. They were willing to die for their relationship with God. So then he goes on and he says, Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So he gives an example of us. Through faith, we believe that God spoke the worlds into existence and he didn't have anything to work with. So we have to believe that by faith, right? right? Because there's, we can't, we just have to take it by faith. And there are a lot of things in the Bible that, that we have to take by faith. There's some things that maybe God necessarily isn't going to show us or prove to us that we just have to believe by faith. But our faith, it's more than just saying, yes, I believe that, but it's our life is exampling that we believe that. Mm -hmm. And so the other things that God does answer, so when we do what God's word says, 
in faith, and then God responds in the way that aligns with his word of what we were doing, that builds our faith. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we apply the word of God to our life and then God responds and honors our faith, that shows us that if he did that for that, then certainly he's who he said he is. Is any of this making sense? Yep. For instance, um, I remember having a conversation one time with somebody and we were talking about the validity of God and the Bible. And this individual didn't believe necessarily God or the Bible and they believed something else that um, just, they believe something else. And I said, well, I used a quote I heard one time, and I said, well, someone with an experience is never at the mercy of someone with an argument. And then they qualified that they had a spiritual experience. And my point was that when you, you can have a spiritual experience, anybody can. There's all kinds of spirits out there. Right. But when you have an spiritual experience that aligns with God's word, what does, what does somebody else's spiritual experience align with? Does it align with God's word? Because if it doesn't, then that's just, that's a spiritual, the enemy can mimic or do anything. So when I have a, when, when, you know, God says he's a healer and I experience healing, then I know by faith that God did it. But you can have a supernatural spiritual experience in a negative way or something that's not of God. And if it's not found in the word of God, then that's going to, that's, that's not the same as having an experience that is founded in the word of God. People have spiritual experiences at the Smart Rock concerts or whatever they call them. Now. You can have a spiritual experience in a seance or playing with a Ouija board or or whatever. And some of those even align with the word of God because he says, do not seek out <laughs> those spirits and those types of things. Don't seek after those things. Right. So then he goes on from verse 4 all the way through um, verse 31 of talking of individuals and mentioning individuals. He starts out with Abel. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice, testifying of his gifts. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had translated him. And before, he had, before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And then, it, then we find, you know, we quote verse 6 all the time, Hebrews 11 and 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But that's connected to Enoch. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. That means he just disappeared. He took his whole body. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. So... Then he goes on and he speaks of Noah and Noah's faith about the building of the ark. He goes on and then he talks about Abraham. And Abraham is a little bit lengthier when he talks about Abraham and Sarah. And then he goes to Isaac. And verse 20, when I was reading through this, uh, this I caught something I had never caught before. Verse 20 of Hebrews 11, when he's talking about all these, by faith Abraham, by faith Enoch and, and Abel and Noah and so on. He says, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Remember the story of Jacob and Esau? Mm -hmm. Jacob stole the birthright, or he traded the birthright, and Esau despised it, and then Jacob stole the blessing. And Esau came begging and crying to his father, Have you not one blessing for me? And basically the blessing was didn't seem like much of a blessing at all. It wasn't that your vats are going to overflow with corn and wine and that you're going to, you know, your brothers are going to serve you and and all the blessings that Jacob got. He did bless him. You're right. And so it says by faith Isaac blessed Jacob 
and Esau concerning things to come. And then by faith, Jacob blessed the sons of Joseph. And Joseph, when he died, gave commandment concerning his bones. And then it goes into Moses, or it seems to go into Moses, but verse 23 is really about Moses' parents. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. So it's talking about their faith. And then when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh and uh, forsook Egypt and go on through uh, the, the Passover and passing through the Red Sea. And then it says in verse 30, after they were delivered from Egypt, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about with seven days. By faith, harlot the Rahab, and this one's interesting too, that she's in the quote-unquote here was the faith in Hebrews 11. Well, isn't faith all about believing? It is. So right. I'm trying to figure out, is there like, you know, which category of believing are all these? But basically it's all believing. Um, it's... But except the walls of Jericho, they, they are the subject of the, the sentence, the walls mm -hmm. are the subject, but how can walls have faith? So, so where he says that, <laughs> by faith, speaking of the faith of Israel, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Who compassed them about? Oh, the bunch. Yeah, the bunch. Yeah. Joshua and his crew, right? <laughs> So when you look at all of these, the fact is that all of these, when Abel offered his sacrifice to God, he didn't know that it was going to be chosen before his brothers was or above his brothers. He didn't do it thinking, oh, I'm going to, oh, he's offering that. I'm going to do this. He just, he just by faith did it, and he offered a better sacrifice. So the fact that it was better... Well, an acceptable sacrifice. Which just happened to be better because more excellent. Ex right. Acceptable. Enoch. Enoch didn't know he was going to be translated. He wasn't like, oh, uh, now that I'm translated, I better serve God. Or he didn't do it with the intention to be translated and taken away. He just served God with so much faith that God said, you're too good for this place. And God took him. Noah was warned of God of things not seen as of yet meaning it had never rained on the earth before. And God said, I'm going to flood the earth. Noah, by faith, believed God, and so he built an ark to the saving of his household. His faith came before the rain started, right? right. He built the ark before the flood. Um, God didn't start it raining, say, you better hurry. <laughs> um, Abraham left his home just on the word of God that God was going to lead him to a better place. So all of these... Are believing what the, word, what the word says, which would be God at this point. Because right. There is no separation. Before the results happen. Right. We want the results to increase our faith. You ever thought that way? Oh, if God would just do this miracle my faith would be just super powered up it'd be like supercharged i prayed that lord would you just do a work an amazing miracle work so other people would see and have faith mm -hmm. because isn't that what you know works miracle signs and wonders are for they are but they're also for confirming the word so the word still has to come first We should pray for people and for faith. You know, God's given to every man a measure of faith. Right. There's nothing certainly wrong with praying what you're praying, but we we also don't want to get the cart before the horse. Correct, but you know, yeah. in these times, I, I, all times, I agree with what you're saying. Just, yeah, God, if you would do this incredible miracle, that whole family would come to you. But what did what did um, when you look at the story of the rich man and Lazarus? Lazarus was a poor beggar. The rich man had everything. When they both died, the rich man went to hell, to the grave, and he was in torment, the Bible says, and Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. So the rich man said, 
send Lazarus to dip his finger in water to cool my tongue. I can't. There's a great gulf. We cannot pass back and forth. So he could evidently see back and forth. And so he says, then send Lazarus to my brothers because I don't want them to come to this place. And he says, they have the law and the prophets. He says, no, but if one went from the dead, they would believe. He says, if they won't believe the law and the prophets, neither would they believe though one was raised from the dead. And maybe it was, you know, maybe there's just some stubborn people out there. Oh, there are. You know. Absolutely. I think that the walls of Jericho are a great one. The fact that they marched around there once a day for six days and then seven times on the seventh day. And what was the instruction? Don't talk. No murmuring. Don't don't talk yourselves out of this. Don't, you know, keep your mouth shut, you know. Don't even think it. <laughs> right? So then he says, what shall I say more? Time would t fail to tell me. And then he mentions people of the judges. So he goes in order. It's really interesting that he oh, starts yeah, with, what, uh, that is 32. So he goes in chronological order of people. He starts with Abel, then he goes to Enoch, then he goes to Noah, then to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to Joseph, to Moses, to Jericho, which would be Joshua, and then to Rahab, which also was in Jericho. And then he goes right from Josh, the book of Joshua into the book of Judges. He says, what would time, uh, what more shall I say? For time would fail to tell me of Gideon and Barak and Samson and of Jephthah. And then he goes to the kings of David and Samuel and the prophets. And then he mentions these things. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the fires, violence of fires, escaped the edge of the sword. Uh, women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others had cr trials of cruel mockings, scourgings, bonds of imprisonments, all by faith. Stone, sawn asunder, uh, tempted, slain with the sword, wandering, uh, tormented. All of these, verse 39 says, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, which means... They were under the old law. They were under the Old Testament. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. But we know then that as long as they kept the law of Moses and their relationship with God, if they were before the law of Moses, that the work on Calvary that Christ did would bring them to, to heaven with God. Another one that jumps out to me similar to Esau was when he mentions the judges remember Gideon right mm -hmm. Gideon started out good but then Gideon ended up stumbling and struggling um, then he talks about Barak Barak was the one with Deborah who killed uh, Sisera King Sisera was killed by Jael she gave him some milk in her tent and Deborah said oh. You know, go take care of Sisera and these enemies. He goes, I'm not going unless you go with me. She says, all right, but know this, that if I have to go with you, then the glory is going to be given to a woman. He says, I don't care. I just want you, I want, the, I want you to go with me because Deborah was a judge. So Sisera went into the tent of Jael, and Jael nailed his head to the floor of the tent with a spike, and she was called blessed among women. <laughs> right? And then it goes to Samson. And then of Jephthah. And Jephthah is the one that jumped out to me. And I think Jephthah it can be a confusing story. You remember the story of Jephthah? No, I can't. Jephthah was an outcast. He was not, he was like a, uh, either his father or his mother. I don't remember which. I think it was his mother. His brother had different mothers. And so he was an outcast. He wasn't accepted in his family and his tribe. But then God raised him to be a judge because the enemy was attacking Israel. And then after they cast him out, then they said, we need you to come lead us into battle because he was a mighty man of valor. And so he says, now you're wanting me in this. So he does all these things, but he made a vow to God. 
He says, God, if you'll deliver the enemy into my hands, the first thing that meets me when I come home, oh, I'll give to you. That's Jephthah. And his daughter came out of the house. Yeah. And his heart was broken, had to give her. Now, some people think that he offered her as a sacrifice to God because it says the women, the girl's city would go up and mourn for his daughter. But I, God is not into human sacrifice. And I, I have a hard time believing that that was the situation. What I really think is that she dedicated herself, because it says they mourned her virginity. So I think that she basically, he only had one daughter, and so now he would, if she was going to dedicate herself to the Lord and never marry, he would never have grandchildren. So I believe that that's, that's what happened in that. But it was interesting that Jephthah, you know, vowing that almost kind of a foolish vow. I think that was a very foolish vow. He was not totally thinking. Yeah. So, but all of these... He believed, he believed God, and he was a man of the word, so mm -hmm. maybe that's why he's included in this chapter. So, faith. And the next, uh, we're going to kind of continue to talk about these. So, out of these... Uh, quick question, which out of this, and if there's somebody else maybe that Hebrews 11 didn't mention, that's fine. You can share them. But out of these, which which one, um, I guess, ministers to you or resonates the most in your mind or in your heart out of these individuals? Well, Abraham, because he left everything and followed after God, left his family. Yeah. Left everything he knew. Right. I think that would be incredibly hard. But, you know, yeah, Noah, he's a good one, too. He built a boat that nobody knew what in the world he was doing right. for all those years. And the side, for 100 years he built the ark. Yeah, yeah that's... That boat. That's on my bucket list. Is it? Mm -hmm. Turkey? No. Kentucky. Kentucky, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go. What about you, Brother Tim? Yeah. Right. Never rained before. Some people don't realize that. It did not rain on the earth until the flood. The Bible says a mist, like a heavy dew, because the earth was like a greenhouse effect. Yeah, it came up and watered the face of the earth. Sister Carol? I had Noah picked out. Too. You had Noah picked out? Noah's an incredible one. Yeah, well, they all have. Yeah, they all. They different aspects. Right, absolutely. Um, I think the two, two that jump out the most to me, uh, and I'll go in order from, I'll save the best for last. I'll just put it that way. So the first one's Rahab. Because she's in a heathen nation. Right. But yet they heard the whole city. She says, we have heard how God has delivered you and done all these things. And our hearts melted. And we could not, we could not, um, you know, get through. We, we couldn't fathom how we're going to do this. She says, so save me and my family. Yeah, because she believed. Right. But she was from a heathen nation. She was a prostitute, the Bible says. You know, but she had enough faith to... But the Bible says the whole city believed that. Mm -hmm. So why couldn't the whole city just turn themselves over and lived? I don't know. The first one for me, though, is Enoch. Because even though, you know, we don't read of any great thing that happened to him... Enoch was in a time when, so Enoch was in a time where the whole world was evil. He was a part of that generation where God said, the entire world is wicked before me. I'm going to destroy it with a flood. So when, when Abraham had 100 years to build the ark, 
I think Abraham's, Noah, I'm sorry. When Noah had 100 years to build, yeah, not Abraham. Uh, when Noah had 100 years to build the ark, if you do a timeline, it shows that Noah's grandfather, Methuselah, died the year of the flood. So the year the flood started, Methuselah, who was the oldest man in the Bible, died. He was Abraham's grandfather. I believe that he was righteous. Noah's father, Lamech, before that, died before his father. And I think that was 70-some years before the flood or something like that. So they were right near the end. So they were definitely at the end time of when God was going to judge the world. But Enoch was pretty young. Enoch would have, if Enoch would not have been translated, I don't know in the timeline. I would have to do a timeline and just see if you add 600 years to his life. Yeah, I, so it was, and yeah, yeah, so Lamech died sooner. So either way, just the fact that that he, when the world was completely evil, him and his generations continued to serve God. So he's, he's another one. But definitely all the other ones I agree with you guys 100%. Um, and the ones that, the, and, and then the last chapters who they don't even mention, the ones that, you know, were beaten and imprisoned and cut in half and stoned and all of these things. So, now the question in the last couple minutes here is, hearing this, what can we do with this? I mean, this is written to us. It's to the New Testament. It is written to the Hebrews. But what can we as the church how can this affect us? How can we take advantage of what we're reading, of this testimony of these people? Well, we can take heart, because sometimes we're pretty hard on ourselves. You know, and we, we judge ourselves carefully, I think. And we can take heart that, you know, the Lord, you know, these are the the big guys that did amazing works for God and he used them greatly. But we are also believe God. We also believe him because we stand upon his word. We believe his word. We believe the gospel, the good news, and we're living by that gospel. So, you know, we think, well, we don't have a lot of faith. Well, yes, we do. Yeah. We do have faith. But what we do with it, you know, how God chooses to use us, you know, like, you know, he used Noah, but there was, and Abraham, but wasn't there more people in Noah that age that he could have used too? Yeah. Well, I think Noah was about the last one if it wouldn't have been for Noah. All right. You know. Um, interestingly, if you do a timeline, when Abraham, I forget how old he would have been, but Abraham and Noah were alive at the same time. Yeah, I did hear that. So after Noah, I don't know if they knew each other, but they were alive at the same time. I, d I doubt they knew each other because Abraham came from the land of Ur of the Chaldees. So. Um, so the other scripture to kind of pin on the end of this is Second Peter 1 and 5. It says, and besides this, so just backing up a little bit, I'm going to read uh, verse 3. It says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these, by these promises, you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the Holy Spirit, he's come that we might have life and life more abundantly, right? Through the knowledge of him that's called us to glory and virtue, whereby 
are given unto us these exceeding great precious promises that by these, by these promises, we might be partakers of his divine nature, escaping corruption that's in the world through lust. In verse 5, and beside this, so when he says beside this, he's, uh, he's talking about coming alongside, right? Along with this, he says giving, the word giving. So it's besides this giving, and that word giving is, it means to bear in alongside. Giving all diligence to add to your faith virtue. So God has given us faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So then we have to add to that faith, which is persuasion, bless you, virtue. And the word virtue, it means uh, manliness or valor. So it can be used in many different senses, but in this area it means excellence, praise and virtue. So add to our faith valor or excellence. Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting that they equate that in that in this language, in this translation, to being a man? That men are called to have this, not that women aren't, but this manliness, this we're called to have a high moral standard. It it takes faith to have that, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It takes faith to have that, but to add to our faith, to that persuasion, this high moral standard, not going along with the ways of the world, but standing firm in our faith. Add to our faith virtue. And then he says, and to virtue add knowledge. Knowing. They act. So I used the scripture uh, last week. My people are destroyed by lack of knowledge. So as we add to that valor, we have to add knowledge. And then to the knowledge, temperance, which is self-control. So the more knowledge that we have and the more virtue that we have, the more self-control we're able to have have, and that we need. And then to that self-control, add patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brother kindness, charity. So there's those two words, the filio first and then the agape later. And then he says this, if we would do that, He says, for if these things be in you and abound, not just in us, but if they abound, right, to make or to be more, to increase, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful, right, Mm -hmm. in the knowledge of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. That's a promise in God's word. That if we add to our faith those things and if we continue to to allow that knowledge and that grace of Jesus Christ to add into our life, to build our life, to build up our faith. We will, that, that's the type of faith, Sister Vicki, that you're talking about before that we want to see in people. Right? right. But where's it got to be first? It's going to have to first be in us so that we can hopefully lead other people to have, you know, as we have that virtue and that knowledge and that temperance and and all of those things that he's talking about because if they're in us and if they abound they'll make us fruitful which is what we want we want to see fruit in our lives and also to keep us from falling Mm -hmm. amen faith is a powerful thing Are we still? Do you want me to testify? Yeah, we can. We can. Let's pray first, and then we'll we'll close out. So, let's just pray that God helps us in faith. 
Jesus, again, we thank you for your word, and I ask God that you would help us to add to our faith as your word declares, as Peter wrote to us, God, that we would add, God, to make our calling and election sure, God, that we would be fruitful, God, and that we would not fall, Lord, but that our faith would help us and lead us and guide us. Lord God, we are saved by your grace through faith. Lord, and faith without works is dead. So help us to live our lives according to your word and that you would help us to add to our faith, Lord God, that we would be fruitful, God, and that we would never fall. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good night.